The incident was the top story for a recent edition of the Gonzaga Bulletin, the student newspaper. That's Eric Fagan on the left and Dan McIntosh on the right. It all began when John Taylor knocked on their door, showed them his electronic monitoring bracelet, and demanded money. They refused. He got upset, and McIntosh, who has a concealed carry permit, pulled out his gun. Taylor ran away but was later arrested for an outstanding warrant. University security guards report confiscating McIntosh's weapon and a hunting gun belonging to Fagan. You may be thinking, well, the university is private property, so it can make whatever rules it wants. Let's see how that stands up against other issues. What if Gonzaga, a Jesuit institution, required all its students to be Catholic? No Jews allowed, but we don't have to worry about that. Gonzaga does not modify your First Amendment rights while on campus. What if Gonzaga required all students to be Democrats? We don't have to worry about that either. Once again, Gonzaga does not modify your First Amendment rights while on campus. But at some point, Gonzaga chose to modify your Second Amendment right to self-defense. Where's the consistency? You'd think the bloody incident at Virginia Tech in 2007 would have made an impact. Just think how students with state-approved concealed carry permits could have stopped the massacre long before 32 people had been killed. Those victims were martyrs for the policy of banning guns. Here's the good news. Recently, Gonzaga President Thane McCullough made this statement. I believe this to be an opportunity to do some important work as a community, to objectively re-examine our firearms policy and openly debate perspectives and contextual issues with an eye towards an honest and open review of the same. Let's hope Gonzaga ends up sodding with America's founding fathers, rather than with a gun-seizing philosophy that's so popular with every totalitarian regime. This is Steve Eastman reporting.